Okay, welcome back. Sorry about that cutoff. Um, so again, talking about the same example, y equals sine x over 2, we uh, modified that and brought that one half out so that you can actually see it as one half times sine x. So its derivative would simply look like y prime is equal to one half times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. So you can simplify that down to one half cosine x or, of course, cosine x over 2. Okay. And there's the proof of our examples. Now, from here, I do have a few more examples for us to work, and so I'll just work through those until the end of the video. So here's example number five. And so, again, I've got a constant multiple right here. I've got a power rule right here. I've got a sum and difference, and I've got a trigonometric identity. So why am I pointing out all of these? Well, it's very possible on a quiz or on a um, assessment, I might ask you to simply identify which rules, which properties these are. So please make sure you do recognize them and their names. So this derivative would be three times two x to the first minus sine x because we're going to the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x so if i simplify that down that becomes 6x minus sine x easy peasy lemon squeezy there's our answer okay here we've got a little bit more complicated as i've warned y'all in the past Trig does not disappear. In fact, the AP exam loves trigonometric equations and trigonometric functions. So the derivative of secant x, I know, is um, secant x tan x. But if we don't just, that's not all it wanted us to do. It now wants us to plug in that pi over 4. So if I have pi over 4, I'm going to plug it in everywhere I see that x. And I'm just going to briefly go over here and just remind myself that secant is equal to 1 over cosine. So really, I want to know what the cosine of pi over 4 is. And whatever trick you use, whether you use your uh, memorization of the unit circle, whether you memorize the first quadrant and know how to adjust from there, whether you use the trig tr uh, hand trick or whatever your method is, know how to solve these um, trig con concept. So the cosine of pi over 4 is going to be equal to the square root of 2 over 2. Tan of pi over 4 is equal to 1. Now, we're not actually going to use square root of 2 over 2 because we're talking about secant. Secant is the reciprocal. So this is going to be equal to 2 over the square root of 2 times 1. Anything times 1 is simply itself. So we're looking at 2 over the square root of 2. If I wanted to get rid of that radical, I conjugate, multiply by square root of 2 over 2, and that becomes 2 square root of 2 over 2, and I can cancel that out. And I'm left with just the square root of 2 as my answer. And one more example here. We've got, this one's a little bit more complicated, but again, we've got a constant multiple, a power rule, a sum and difference, another constant multiple, and a trig. So I'm going to rewrite this into something that looks a little prettier to me. So I'm going to keep that constant, but I'm going to bring my x to the 6 from the denominator to the numerator so that I can recognize it for the power rule that it is. So now if I do g prime, I'm going to know that that's 4 times negative 6x to the negative 6 minus minus 1, so that's negative 7, plus 5 times the derivative of cosecant, which is negative uh, cosecant x cotangent x. So if I simplify this down, that becomes negative 24x to the negative 7th minus 5 co ooh, cosecant x cotangent x. And then, of course, I plug this in. So if I'm going to do g prime of, what is it, 5 pi over 3, that's going to become negative 24. And this whole value right here is going to move to the bottom because of that negative exponent. So I'm going to go ahead and put it down there. 5 pi over 3 to the 7th minus 5 of cosecant and cotangent x. Um, and so let's figure out those. So remember, cosecant is simply 1 over um, sine, and cotangent is 1 over tangent. So we're really looking for those. So what's the sine of 5 pi over 3? Well, the sine of pi over 3 is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And all I have to do is figure out which quadrant it is. So quadrant uh, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. Okay, so we're going to be in quadrant 4. And since all students take calculus, so the only thing that's positive in quadrant 4 is um, cosine, then my sine has to be negative. My tan of 5 pi over 3 is going to be the square root of 3 over 1. 
and it's also negative in quadrant three. Again, we're not going to use those values. We're going to use their reciprocals. So this becomes negative two over the square root of three. Come on. Come on, Pen. You were doing so good. Okay, times negative one over the square root of three again. And if I simplify this down, uh, those square root of threes on, over here are going to cancel out. Um, negative times a negative times a negative. We're going to still be left with a negative. Five times two up top is ten over three. That's not going to simplify easily, so we can leave that as it is. And over here, that's not simple. I'm not going to simplify that. That's crazy. So that's five pi over three to the seventh. And that's our end answer right there. Just to give you a clearer example of what that looks like, there we go. That's what I wrote down. And that's it. That is it for our examples. And just to write a bit of closure down here, what we talked about, we talked about, ooh, we talked about the constant. We talked about the power rule. We talked about constant multiple. We talked about sum and difference and trig. And I'll see you all next time.